Folks, welcome back to another episode of The Fallen Badge. Today we're going to be looking at the murder of Sergeant Joshua Caldell, Arkansas Department of Corrections. Folks, our store today is going to be in Pulaski County, Arkansas. That's just a little north of Little Rock there in the central part of Arkansas. Now, Sergeant Caldell, at the time of this event, he was assigned to the Tucker Unit. Now that prison there is in Dudley Lake Township. Now that's in unincorporated Jefferson County. So when he got the call to go assist Pulaski County Sheriff's Department, he had about an hour's drive just to arrive on the scene. Now Sergeant Caldell, he had almost 10 years at the Department of Corrections. He was a canine officer. He had a wife and three kids. And when we get done with this story, we're still not going to understand why he had to die. Why this fellow that shot him, why he did it. Sure didn't need to be that way. Now, Sergeant Caldell... He had worked at the Cummins unit, and he'd been at the Varner Supermax in Pine Bluff, so he had been to several prisons across the state. Now, this fellow that's going to be involved in this stuff, if y'all are counting on me finding something good about him, I couldn't find anything. But I uh, I think his actions speak volumes about the character of him. He's just another no-account person that marginalizes the life of other human beings. It's all about him. It's February 27th, 2022, about 8 p.m., Pulaski County deputies, they get a call to perform a welfare check. There's a woman that hadn't shown up for work. So her fellow workers and her boss are worried about her. So the deputies go over to the 1400 block of Corvallis Road. Now that's near Highway 365 just a rock's throw away from the town of Maumelle. So now the deputies get to the house, check on this woman. Now I'm not 100% sure, but resource material seems to indicate that this woman is married to the suspect. Now the deputies go up to the house and then shots are fired from inside the house at the deputies. So they take cover and call for some help and they get inside the house and nobody's there. So whoever was inside there had left before the police could get a perimeter set up because now it looked like from 
what I was seeing on those houses, they're houses back up to the woods, so it wouldn't be too hard to run out the back. Now later on, what would be discovered was the female wasn't at the house. She was somewhere else. Now, I don't know how long she'd been away from the house she lived in or why she didn't call work. So work could have called the police and said, well, she's okay, she's somewhere else. But as usually happens, the police are the last to know. Anyways, you got gunfire at deputies, so they're going to need some tracking dogs to see if they can pick up the scent of this fella that's was shooting at law enforcement. Which, of course, begs the question here, why would the fella shoot at the police? Now, if the wife wasn't there and it was just him, there wouldn't be any need to shoot at the police. Even in his little mind, I, I can't think of a way he could justify doing that. There ain't nothing going on. But now, it could have been she was in the house. They went out the back. I don't know. Still doesn't make any sense. But anyway, shooting at the police is against the law. Arkansas takes a dim view of such things. So anyways, one of the tracking dogs they call for is Arkansas Department of Correction. Now they could call and they get a hold of Sergeant Caldell. And they ask him to bring his dog up to Pulaski County. So now by the time they make that call and he makes that drive, it's, if it ain't February 28th, it's soon to be. Now they had multiple canines on this track. I'm not really sure how they did that. I've been with canine handlers walking behind them when they were doing a track. And I've never seen multiple dogs trying to do the same track, so I don't know exactly how they did it, but in any event, they get the dogs out and they start tracking. I'm assuming from the rear of the house that that'd been the only way he could have escaped. Now, Sergeant Caldell's dog, he gets a scent. Now, he's got another officer with him. That's the best way to work. It's the handler needs to watch his dog and watch his reaction so sometimes he can't always look up and see what's in front of him that's why you need that second officer now that dog cuts back through the woods and he's heading east through those woods now that first street east is street called it's over street so the dog is heading straight for a trailer. Now, as you know, with trailers, you can get underneath them. Well, that dog goes right to the underneath of a trailer. I don't know which one it was. There's several lined up there. Sergeant Caldell and the other officer with him, they got the flashlights on and they're shining on underneath that trailer because the dog sure wants to get underneath that trailer. Now while they're doing that, shots are fired from underneath the trailer. Sergeant Caldell is hit. So the other officer, he takes cover wherever he can find it. Now I'm going to assume he got the dog and led it away because now generally that dog is not going to leave his master. He's going to stay right there with him. But... In any event, so they call for help. And they bring the tack unit in and they get the trailer surrounded. Now they end up, they use a robot to go underneath the house. I'm sorry, underneath the trailer. Which is the best way to do it. Because I, I know that's usually what they use the dogs for, but I, I sure hate when they have to send that dog under there and get the dog. But 
better that and get an officer, another officer shot. So anyways, they put the robot underneath and there ain't nobody in there. So evidently, our suspect, as soon as he shot Sergeant Caldell, he crawled out and took off. And I'm assuming he did so from the back side of the trailer where the officer that was still standing couldn't see him. So now they begin searching for the suspect and it don't take them long, but they, they're they thinking the fellow they're looking for is the suspect. And I'm assuming resource material doesn't exactly spell this out, but I'm assuming He's developed as a suspect because he lived at the house in question and that the woman that didn't show up for work was his wife. But now that's just a guess. Don't know for sure. So anyways, it probably takes about a day and a half or so, but they finally catch the suspect there at the Quick Trip Market. Now that's just off a of 365 highway and that's just right there where it's a little east northeast of where the shooting occurred and they take him into custody now Sergeant Caldell he he lingers for a little while and it ain't long before he dies so now our suspect He's facing the capital murder charges, attempted murder charges, a whole bunch of charges. And if what I saw about his criminal record is true, he's a convicted felon in possession of a handgun, if they go that route. I don't know if they recovered the gun. Resource material doesn't state. Anyways, sad story. Sergeant Caldell sure didn't need to die. There was no need in it. This fella just made things worse. His inability to reason through an event, it just, it just got worse. It snowballed on him. And he, like so many, they always fall back to violence as their way to cope with whatever issue there is. I wish I knew the whole story regarding his wife or girlfriend, whoever that woman was that didn't show up for work. Because if you look at the resource material, the police didn't even need to go over there because that woman wasn't even at the house. But then again, maybe she was. She sure should have called work about such things. I don't know. Sergeant Joshua Caldell. End of watch, February 28th, 2022.